Hey, welcome. Welcome back to the channel. This is Marta's Magical Mystery Class. And this is our third video on drafting your first novel. Yay! At this point, I'm hoping you're at about 10,000 words. If you're not, again, feel free to just hold this until you are. Um, and, you know, it'll be here waiting for you. And if you are actually at 10,000 words or thereabout, fantastic! For most of you that are aiming for a 60 to 70,000 word draft, that puts you at about the 15% mark. So that's significant. Uh, hopefully the materials you've developed for outlining and brainstorming, which you can continue to do as part of your process, are continuing to serve you. Um, hopefully you are at this point tracking chapters and scenes so you know who's doing what, you're keeping a bead on how those scenes fit into your overall narrative arc. That's all fantastic stuff, folks, and my congratulations to you all. Um, the last time, the little bit of advice I had to offer you all as new novelists um, was to bear in mind that even as you are working to meet genre obligations, you have the chance to change genre conventions. Um, that's a lot of freedom. That's a lot of power. And it's very exciting. Um, in a similar way, all of us have writers, all of us as writers, particularly as fiction writers, um, have choices about our character construction. Um, if you're a white writer, it is important in your novels that when you create characters of color, they are characters who are really fully fledged people who aren't merely repetitions of stereotypes, that you are informed about how that character or that character's culture functions, um, that you are compassionate in your depiction of characters who are different from you racially. Uh, same goes if you are a straight writer and you're creating gay characters. Same goes if you are a cis writer. Some of you may or may not know what cis means. If you're older, um, you may have heard that word, but you may not know. Uh, cis means the gender that you were assigned at birth is a gender that continues to suit you, continues to fit. Folks who are trans, folks who are non-binary, that gender assigned at birth doesn't fit anymore, okay? So, or never did fit from the beginning, and they come to awareness at some point that they are actually a different gender than the one that was assigned at birth. So if you are a straight, white, cis writer, and many of you are because, hey, there's a lot of us folks around, um, it's particularly incumbent on you to be sensitive in your creation of characters who are different from you. Representation is good. We want uh, everybody to be able to see a little bit of themselves in our work, but um, creating characters who are different from yourself um, and who still feel real and authentic takes work, homework. And I've never been shy about giving you all homework. So, you know, I keep asking you to read more deeply in genre. I keep asking you to stretch and read writers who are different from yourself. This is another facet of that. Um, as part of this week's homework, go see if you can find something in your genre by a writer of color. I've recommended a lot of them. Um, go see if you can find something in your genre by a writer from the LGBTQIA plus community. If you are a writer from those communities, celebrate that! Yay! Um, there are more of you out there. You're not alone. Uh, this is really, publishing is really finally starting to open up to writers who are other than white, who are other than straight, who are other than cis. I've said too at points that I was gonna try to highlight 
writers with disabilities on the channel. That's a little harder thing to track. I am continuing to do homework there, um, and I will continue to update you on those things. But as you write, as you work on your novel, it's really gonna be hard to create a novel in any contemporary setting that doesn't include characters who differ from one another along racial lines or along lines of gender or sexual orientation. Um, a novel that doesn't reflect some of those differences probably doesn't truly reflect the world that we live in at present. Now, if you are writing mysteries set in the past, if you are writing mysteries set in the future, those dynamics shift. But that need to be sensitive in your creation of characters different from yourself remains. Kindness, folks. Kindness is everything. Kindness and homework. So, um, I also want to recommend to you, I'm moving right into the recommendation portion uh, of today's video, a uh, writer of color, um, Jesse Q. Sutanto, who is Chinese and Indonesian, and uh, her book, Dial A for Aunties, which it, I've seen various descriptions of the book, and I thought I had an idea what to expect when I got into it. It was on my, it was one of the books I held up as a book I was really anticipating reading, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I blazed through it in about two and a half days. Um, it, it was and was not the book I expected. Remember last video when I talked about as you work in the genre, you have a chance to change the genre? Sutanto is definitely doing that. Um, she has set up a story that is a murder mystery of a sort, but it's a murder mystery where we know exactly who's done it, we know exactly how it was done, we know exactly who the victim is, we know why it was done, and yet there's still a lot of suspense to be had as we find out what happens to the victim posthumously in the middle of a billion dollar resort uh, where a huge Chinese Indo wedding is happening. And Madeleine, our central character, and her aunties are all trying to uh, perform their duties as part of the staff for the wedding, uh, hairstyling, catering, entertainment, those kinds of hair and makeup. Um, and photography, while at the same time um, dealing with the remains of our murder victim. Yeah, um, it makes for quite a premise, it makes for quite a book, uh, but I did really have to laugh reading it because uh, she is definitely playing with conventions of the genre. Um, and there are people, there because there are critics calling it a murder mystery, there are critics calling it a romance. Um, and certainly it doesn't read like a standard romance either. Um, she's doing a really neat job of keeping to some of those genre obligations and yet cheerfully turning them inside out. And what's very clear about Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto, and I think I think I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. If I am not, I will certainly spell it correctly in the description for the channel. Um, it, she has created a really fun comic piece that will soon be a Netflix movie. I highly recommend the book and the movie. So, get back to work, folks. You have more words to make. So this was the 10,000 mark, next time, 15. Best of luck to you. Keep reading, keep researching, and keep writing.